Uh, we got interviews, different perspectives in a view. Listen to learn what winners do. Empirical wisdom. Tell me, tell me about your uh, upbringing, man. How was your upbringing like? Uh, so my 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 upbringing is kind of crazy. I don't, you know, you guys at the gym don't know much about that. Um, I was adopted at seven days old. So, long story short, um, in the Philippines, my adopted parents were in the military, in the Air Force, and uh, he was stationed. They were stationed at Clark Air Force Base in um, the Philippines, and um, basically, I was I was dropped off at their doorstep. They knew they knew he was a doctor. And um, I was very sick. I was the first seven days of my life. I was only fed sugar water. I had salmonella. I had uh, wow. a, uh, an infection in my my tear duct. They had to do surgery on. Um, you know, I and they a social worker and another lady dropped me off at their at their doorstep and they're like, "Hey, can you take care of this baby?" So they took they took me in. And uh, my parents are white. My family's white. Um, you know, but you, you, you look pretty white to me. Though. Yeah, no, just yeah. letting you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 <laughs> they can't tell, you can't tell. <laughs> the crazy thing is, man, the crazy thing is that, um, growing up, it was never like, I never felt anything, yeah. ne never felt different. Yeah. You know, I, like later on, like growing up, my mom would tell me stories about, you know, once once we moved to the States, like my dad was the doctor of these tiny towns, like these tiny itty bitty towns in Texas. So whenever my dad would, we would go in, you know, we would be like, okay, Dr. Ridge's, you know, yeah. family's here. And then they would see me and then it would be kind of like a shocker. And then my mom told me that she gave so many women looks because the, they were staring and I never <laughs> felt it. You know, they did, yeah. they did a very good job with that growing up, so. Oh wow, that's yeah. pretty awesome, dude. Do you have any siblings from from that too, or? Um, yeah. Well, they were, you know, my my they had you know kids already. Okay. Like I didn't. There's no other adopted like um, biological family that they took in. Um, but yeah, um, I have I have brothers and I have one sister. So so you're the youngest. Or? I'm the youngest. Wow, yeah. dude, that's so freaking interesting. And so most of your like childhood was in in Texas. Um, yeah, I would say I grew up in Texas. Um, I, we lived in South Dakota, North Dakota for a little bit. Um, very I was different very, there, yeah. very different. I was, I was super young, so I didn't remember much of it. Yeah. Um, but growing up, it was, it was through Texas. Um, like I said, we lived in these tiny little towns and we would move a lot. And then, um, I remember we, we, we got to a, a city called Amarillo, Texas, and we got there when I was in fourth grade. And I was like, I told I remember telling my parents, I'm like, hey, can we stop moving? Because I make friends and then then we leave. Yeah. You know, so it was hard. I mean, they're like, Yeah, we're gonna stay here. We're gonna, you know, let you graduate high school here. So Amarillo, Texas is where I grew up, fourth, fifth grade, went to middle school and then uh high school. And how come your parents moved so much? Like, uh, um, like just because my dad would be, he would be the doctor for these tiny towns, and it'd be gotcha. like a year or two, and then we'd move to another tiny town, oh, that's pretty a year or two, and then, and then finally we got to a bigger city, and um, they decided to stay because I kept on asking if we could yeah. stay. Yeah, yeah, I, I think the same thing kind of happened to my wife. Um, growing up but she was mainly with her mom and you know her mom always like moving from one place like every year she went to a different school yeah. so she never managed to like really um build up the, those uh school friendships yeah you and know that's important man yeah <clears throat> absolutely so um uh you know so i, I kind of kind of like understand you know what you're saying when when you ask them like not to continue moving um so so when do you um as a kid like growing up, right? Obviously, they did a great job. Um, never made you feel any different. You know, you were part of the family, stuff like that. You are their family, right? Um, what What were their like influences? You know, you know, like like where did he ever like your dad, for example, did he ever say like you got to be a doctor 
Um, what about your mom? Was she a doctor too, or no? She no? was a stay at home mom. Okay, stay at home yeah, mom. Yeah, so, yeah. She kind of ran like the doctor's offices when gotcha. we were in the, the smaller towns. Okay, but yeah, she she ran the household. Got it. So, but you were never you never had that influence from your dad, like kind of like to become a doctor one day, or no? It's kind of it's kind of crazy. Like I was super independent, I guess, growing up. Gotcha. Um, they they let me kind of dabble in like you know the the regular sports football baseball soccer all that stuff in in middle school and high school but they they didn't really like push me towards like hey you need to be you need to go to medical school you need to go to college to be you know a chiropractor you know they they pretty much let me figure out and do what i want that's 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 really amazing dude because uh there's a lot of parents that sometimes directly or indirectly right they try to influence the kids who follow a certain path and that's why you got so many kids that go to school they follow something that they don't really want to follow but they do because the parents put so much pressure on them yeah. and then eventually they like they either quit school or they graduate and they they end up doing something else something else yeah um and so that that is amazing i'm, I'm like that with my kids kind of like you know hear values morals principles now you choose what you want to follow right you know like what what is that you like you want to be an artist you want whatever you want to be a singer then always give 100 percent to whatever it is that you want to do so how, so you, you it seems like you were really involved in sports mm -hmm. um like from what you're telling me you know all these different sports and stuff like that so when do you start picking up like martial arts it was um i would say middle of high school like uh i was i was big into football and um uh, th this story is kind of crazy. Like, like a couple of my buddies, like I, I remember being a sophomore, and a couple of them made made it to, to varsity. And I, was, mm -hmm. I was pissed. I was like, "Screw this! I'm, you know, I'm done with football." And then after that, um, I found a kickboxing gym, and I was like, "Mom, like, you know, can I go here?" And then they're like, "Cool, yeah, whatever." So I started going there, and then like I I, I picked up kickboxing pretty quickly. Got you. And um, started competing very, very quick after I after I'd started, and and after that, like, I took it serious. That's what I really excelled in. I was like, I, I I'm gonna take this serious. I'm gonna be the best I could be at this. But but what triggered that though? Um, I think the the fact uh, you know any team sport like there's there's competition and yeah. you know you're can, looking to be the best at your position or being the best as a team. I think I, once I kind of figured out I was good at this, like then it was me still having the, the ability to progress in what I was doing. So I think it was kind of like, you know, as any athlete, it's kind of like, kind of like a high, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's, it's like you want to be better. So you keep on doing it. So I think I got a taste of, of I was pretty good at it, and I'm going to take it seriously. You, you were good at it, but it was also, like, challenging. Challenging. Challenging is a good <laughs> yeah. word for it, yeah. Yeah, I did. And um, so how do you go from that to, okay, this 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 happening in high school. Um, do you go to college, any college? Any, do you, uh, like, go from high school into college or took time off or on uh, no college? Yeah, so I, I went to college. I went to a, a community college for a little bit. But at the same time, um, uh, in the mix of the kickboxing, like I had met my my other coach, he in Sancho. Uh, Sancho is is a Chinese martial art. It's basically just like Muay Thai, mm -hmm. uh, punch, kick, and throw. And um, I met him, and basically, what he he was looking for some fighters to go fight overseas in a fight. So he basically came to Amarillo. He was living in Lubbock at the time. Um, Lubbock's where Texas Tech is, and he he's Chinese, and he backstory he came to to the states to go to college, so he was he graduated from Texas Tech. So after you know after college, he planned to have his own gym on fighters, but at the time he didn't have his gym yet. Um, but he was still real big in the fight scene overseas, so he was looking for some fighters to go fight overseas, and. Um, he had basically like an open triad, open open gym day, yeah. sparring day, a bunch of fighters in there, and uh, I ended up sparring and 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 you know a bunch of guys my size. And after that, like he was, 
he came up to me and he's like, hey, like, do, can you get a passport? And I'm like, I can. Um, he was like, well, I would like you to fill this position at, I first, my very first fight was at 65 kilograms and that was close to like 140 something. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, obviously I dropped down to 60 kilograms and then my, my actual fight weight, I stayed at 56 kilograms, but, um, yeah, so I, I, I met him and then, um, from there, then I was trying to go to college. So it was like. I, I had my fight overseas, then I'd come back, go to school, try to focus on that, but I was still training, and then another fight would get booked. I'd go fight overseas, and then come back and go to college, and then at the time, I was like, you know, co college isn't for me. Yeah. Like, I've always had, like, you know, things that I wanted to do, but at the time, then, I was this young guy, getting being able to travel overseas to do something that I love and I'm that I'm good at. And I'm going to continue to focus on this. So I, I dropped out of college. I was a college dropout and focused on that. Um, I, eventually, I helped open my, my coach's gym. Like, we literally built it from scratch, like drywall, everything. And now he's the USA head coach for, for the sport in Lubbock, Texas. Nice. And his, his facility is huge now. He's got two. Um, but, yeah, uh, college dropout because I wanted to focus on fighting. Got it. And how do you go? How do you go from that into getting more interested into like the MMA? Um, you know, um, more into MMA, more into um, boxing. Uh, you know, now you're doing bare knuckle, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually, people that go into bare knuckle, not all of them, most of them, I think, like they have that boxing background. Yeah. So the the so the. What got me into thinking MMA and then more towards the boxing. First, my, my coach, uh, his name is Ian Lee. Mm -hmm. um, he was a boxer before he was a Sancho guy. And uh, so his boxing is, is true boxing. Mm -hmm. And then he moved into Sancho. And then he was, you know, world champion in, in, in his weight class. And crazy thing is, like, whenever we're over there, he's like Oscar De La Hoya, you know. So um, that's where I got my boxing from. And then mixed with the kicks and also the judo. Yeah. But, um... While in Lubbock, so I moved from Amarillo to Lubbock to help my coach uh -huh. train, work for him, and uh, in fight. Um, and at that time, in Lubbock, there was a pretty big name UFC guy uh, that lived in Lubbock. His name's Leonard Garcia. God, Good friend of mine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I knew Cowboy before. He, Cowboy was, is, you know, a household name. Yeah. Um, but Leonard would come to the gym, do, do uh, our stand-up with us and hang out. And he brought Cowboy in. They would do some stand-up with us. Um, so that got me into the, you know, thinking MMA. Um, I had the opportunity to go stay in the dorms at uh, Jackson's camp whenever mm -hmm. he had the dorms. That's where Leonard and Cowboy and all them would stay, Diego Sanchez. All the, all the big-name guys whenever they were in their rookie years. Um, I turned it down. Um, at that time, I just – I had no desire yeah. of of the ground game or anything like that. I just want to focus on Sanchu and be world champion in Sanchu. And uh, so I passed that up. And then I ended up, you know, getting injured. And then at the time I was, you know, a poor fighter. And I took a, took a hiatus. I, I left fighting, went into retail management. And then... Uh, I ran retail stores for almost 10 years, and that's what actually brought me out to Florida. And then I got tired of retail, and then somehow, God willing, um, it circled me back into the fight and fitness world. And that's how I ended up um, doing bare knuckle. Yeah. <laughs> I met Julian Lane, and then Mike, then Matt met Julian Lane, and yeah. then I was like, you know, I'm still competitive. Like, I have the opportunity to fight for bare knuckle. Why not do it? And at that time, I was already Matt's boxing coach at his gym. Yeah, I mean that that's a pretty interesting. Like Leonard, like obviously he's one of like the um, veterans in the sport. You yeah. know, like tough dude. Like he he should go out there and just like duke it out. Yeah. You know, like so. Um, I remember his fights. Um, you know, the the guy was a a big name back in the days. You yeah. Know? Yep. Um, obviously, you got to be. You, you can't if you're young you don't really know who he is you know but the people that that are a little older and 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 
been around the sport, like you know who that is. Yeah. You know, uh, obviously Cowboy and Diego and all those people, um, you know, they're big names in the sport. Mm -hmm. um, and so now you're in Florida, you start getting into bare knuckle and stuff like that. Um, how, how do you, how does your, like, so you go from not competing into like, let me start training yep. to get back into competition. Yep. The good thing is like you're already coaching, mm -hmm. right? Kind of like a boxing coach. And that puts you back in the environment, which is important, right? Mm -hmm. Like you want to be surrounded by people that are like training, like the, the energy is different. The sweat is different. The mindset is different, you know? Um, so now here you are getting ready for your first bird knuckle fight. Mm -hmm. What is going through your head? Um, you know, as soon as they're like, okay, yeah, we've got you set in the fight. Um, I was like, man, like this is it. I'm back. Yeah. So the, the energy and like the, the nervous excitement came back and then we just went full in, full in the camp. Right. And, um, the feeling w was of like the competition feeling and like this, this go round wasn't quite as, as like intense as whenever I first had my fight overseas. I think just because of the experience that I had over yeah. the years and then knowing I'm coming back a little bit older, a little bit, you know, seasoned that, um, I didn't have like the nervous jitters and yeah. it, was, it was more of the excitement. Let's get the job done. Yeah. But I was super pumped coming back into the, to the, to the fight world. And, um, luckily my first, first opponent, I was able to get him out in the first round. So that just made me hungry for, for another and another and another. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, it, cause, cause it's interesting. Like obviously a lot of people talk about ring rust and, and, and things like that. Um, I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. Like I'm always like on the fence. I think like it's mostly your mindset and, and if you get a good camp, I think like, you know, you can, you can actually push through it. Um, it happened with Brandon, you know, he had a back surgery and things like that. He was uh, like out of the sport pretty much for like three, four years, comes back, he goes right into LFA and fights a, 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 like a tough competitor, you know, an opponent. And, and he got the win and obviously he had to push through it. But, you know, uh, I think like even through in, in the, during the fight, he had like an adrenaline dump that a lot of people don't, don't know. They, they don't know how it feels. Yeah. Right? Like when you have an adrenaline dump and your legs are, you don't feel your legs, right? However, people can't even tell because mentally he was so ready that he was able to like continue pushing. Right. You know? Um, yeah, like I've seen other people with experience where they would tell me like I had an, a, an adrenaline dump. So they right away, they, they go to the ground, you know, because that's where they feel mm -hmm. more comfortable because now your legs, you're not feeling your legs as much. Um, so, so it's pretty interesting that after all that time you come back, obviously you get excited. Like the first time you, you, you compete that like you, you never feel that again, you know, it's always yeah. like the first time for everything. Right. right, right. Um, now you come as more of like, um, you, you start getting anxious, right. Cause you're like, Oh, let's get this done. Come on, yeah. let's go. You know? Um, but obviously bird knock was, uh, is different from boxing. Yeah. Like things fly a lot. Like I feel like a little faster. The hands are like smaller, um, you know, the, the way you get hit with like with the bone, with the, with the knuckles, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a different feeling. Oh yeah. And, you know, it can truly rearrange your face, you know, in yeah. a different way. Yes. So how, 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 can you share that, uh, like that experience as far as like getting hit with boxing gloves and like just being hit with like, just, you know, burn knuckles. Yeah. So, so getting hit, <clears throat> you know, you know, anybody that gets punched with the boxing glove, it hurts, mm -hmm. it hurts, but the the sting of the bare knuckle is that's what that's what will never ever leave my mind it's always the first punch that lands clean that it's the first initial sting in it it's, it lingers huh it stings it, it hurts it, it stings and, 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 and it, it lingers like right. it stays there or you it hits and then like you're in the fight but um you know with with the bare knuckles like with boxing gloves on you're able to catch yeah carry the punches a lot easier and, and your fists are, are so much smaller that the, the, you know, the, the speed of the hand is so fast and you can't block and parry quite as good without the, the glove. So you're taking a lot of it. So bare knuckle is, 
It, it not only hurts your face, but you, you feel it after the fight. Your knuckles are swollen. Like, my knuckles, like, they're three times the size they were before I started doing bare knuckle just because of the bone that has grown over the bone to, to, to heal. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a different feeling. The boxing, it, it's just like boxing. The rules are, are slightly different, but if you can imagine, like, a boxing match – with like little knives on your fist yeah. that's what it feels like the first literally the first round and the second round like then all that goes out the window you're in the fight everything's numb like you're just you just want to win but even blocking i mean you you blocking knuckles right like i mean i've done in many street fights all right um uh, I, like and it's but it's so different because in the street things happen very different from like you having to go in the uh, square circle, right? And um, and now you got a set of rules. Yeah. And there's, there's you got to stick to those rules, right? Um, but when you fight in the street, obviously things are very different. Like they, you don't have those rules, so you don't have to you don't you don't have to care to fall within the rules, right? You just throw. Right. But um, but even when you fight in the street, if you're not careful, you can hurt yourself. You know, like bone and bone stuff. It, it hurts. Uh, even if you're a professional athlete, like like. I don't care, like if you check the kick or whatever, it's, you're still gonna feel it next day. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're gonna fall bones. on the ground, which is cement. Uh, it's yeah, not, it's not mad. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and just I can't just imagine like having to block, you know, like and here here comes that this this bones, you know, they're gonna hit you right on the arm if they don't if they don't hit you in the face. Right. Right. Um. But um. But it's pretty interesting because of, how do you see the speed? Like I think it's a lot faster. It's it's a lot faster. I, I, like my first opponent, I ended up taking out the first round. But my second opponent, with him, he was a lot bigger than me. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't he didn't make weight, but that's another story. Yeah. But he was bigger than me, and also he was fast. So his length, like when he would throw his jab, it looked like it was coming slow, but it was coming at lightning speed. And even though I, I would block him, a couple of them got in, and it just. Not even after the second one that that landed, it cut me. His 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 knuckle was like a like a tiny little knife. Yeah. Yeah, and bone on bone, it's different, and it's so fast. <laughs> so, what's what's the difference between you preparing for bare knuckle and let's say a boxing match? Um, <clears throat> for me, um, I don't know what it's like for other bare knuckle guys, but for me, it's 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 relatively the same. Um, I think the only thing that, that changes a bit is that, um, closer to, uh, fight day, yeah. we change from boxing gloves to, to MMA gloves. So we just, you know, our, the hands feel it a little, a little bit yeah. more. Um, I know a lot of this, a couple of bare knuckle guys will go straight bare knuckles on, on the pads, but yeah, yeah I don't, that. I don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, preparation is, is very, very similar. I would say it's pretty close to the same um only thing with bare knuckle is that uh you can fight in the clinch you can yeah you can clinch down and, and dirty box yeah um thank goodness i don't i've never gotten that situation where i had to to fight in the clinch like that um but you know with the background you know matt's a muay thai guy yeah. and also sanchi it's it's a bunch of inside stuff and, yeah. and 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 holding so i'm able to to weather the storm in there if i need yeah. but um that would be the only other thing that would be different Right, yeah, getting ready for box to fight. In yeah, obviously, yeah, because like if you're not prepared for those things, then you're 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 gonna feel it totally different because your body, your brain is not telling the body how to prepare for those hits. Right. You know, um, if you're if you're somewhat comfortable, then you're able to absorb those things a lot better exactly. because your body prepares. You and know, reacts. Yeah, like you just reacts. and you're not wasting any energy trying to like, oh my gosh, like what am I supposed yeah. to be doing at this moment, like. You're able to react properly and, and just like you said, absorb most of it. What What do you think is the hardest thing for you as far as like being a competitive fighter? Like what what, what like on the, on the personal level on the uh, in the sport? You know, what do you think is the, the like probably the the one or two biggest challenges that you might have like when as you're trying to prepare for for a fight? Prepare for a fight. <clears throat> um, personal level. Uh, you know, as as for, for me personally, I like to eat. 
<laughs> As a fighter, I like to eat. <laughs> yeah, I think all, I think all fighters are like like are like little um I wouldn't say like uh, hefty hefty guys. They they didn't train. They'll be walking around like super heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one, uh, I think I think personally for me, it's it's the discipline part whenever it comes to the diet. Obviously, I'm very disciplined when it comes to diet, but getting myself to get my mind right to stay focused on the diet. Um, that's the personally that's the hardest for me because I like to eat. I like good food, I like candy, I like sweets. Um, and I like I'm a sociable guy. Like I like to hang out with with people, you know, go to dinner, do things like that, have ice cream. Like I'm sponsored by an ice cream shop. Shout out Happies. There you go. Um, but yeah, uh, I love sweets. And then, you know, as a as a sports for, for as in the in the sport of, of bare knuckle and any fighter, um, I think some of the difficulties would be uh, if you're going through something in your personal life, it's, 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 you know, I've been through it. I'm sure a lot of the guys have, uh, you know, going, if you're going through something in your personal life, it's, it's very hard for me to separate what's going on in my personal life to focus on my training. Um, you know, my last camp was tough. It was, t- you, you know, yeah. I, I had t- talked to you about it. Um, my last fight camp was tough and you know it it was a lesson learned yeah. it made me stronger and but if if we don't if we're not strong mentally then we can't succeed physically when it comes to competitive sport like what, yeah. what we do and, and and i think that's the biggest thing for the biggest biggest challenge for um humans in general the the only difference is like when you're a competitive fighter you don't you can't afford that luxury of like allowing those things to to interfere with your training and your mindset because you can get hurt yeah right um if if you're doing something else it'll affect you maybe differently but when you in front of another guy is trying to whoop your behind right like um you can't afford to to start thinking about things that you're going through in your personal life um, and, and I think that's the hardest, probably the, the, one of the biggest things that or challenges that most fighters try to, to learn how to, uh, overcome. Obviously you got to be emotionally sh- strong, right? Um, but you gotta, you gotta feed it. You gotta build it to the point that you kind of like understand that it's not that you don't care, but you got to take this personal issue, put it on the shelf. You got this other issue. Put it on another shelf and concentrate on your fight. When you're done with the fight, then you're able to come back around and, and resolve those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes it's hard because yeah. you wear it on, on your on your on your shoulders, you know, on your back. And 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 now you're going into camp and you try to concentrate, but as you're hitting the bag, then it hits you. It can be a significant other, right? A, a girlfriend or whatever. Anything can be happening. And uh you hit in the back and you, you feel like Superman. Next thing you know, it crosses your mind. Now you feel like the weakest guy in the room. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and, and it's interesting because my son used to wrestle throughout high school and I used to take him to different camps, right? And I would tell him, like I would have a conversation with him. I'm like, son, look all the things that we we're having to do. I, I, I take time from my day to pick you up to take you to a camp, take you to another camp, you know, we do all these things. So if something ever happened to me, please do not stop. You still got to go and compete. Mm -hmm. We're putting in so much work that I don't, you're not going to be able to do anything. If I'm like, literally this is what I told him. If I'm dead, I'm already dead. Like there's nothing that you can say or do that's going to bring me back. And we put in, in, putting in so much time that I, I need you to go out there and keep doing what you're supposed to do. You know, after, after you go and compete, then come back around if you want and whatever, you yeah. know, say, say um, a, a prayer for me or whatever. But I was like, um, don't, I, I always try to teach him how to, how to not mix those things because one thing can certainly affect you even, and it can be vice versa. 
you can be in camp and you're doing all these things and you're training your mind to be this this predator and you're a warrior and you you're gonna destroy everything. And if you're not careful, you can bring that home. Yeah. And you you're gonna treat other people just like that because your mind is like, eh, 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 you right. know. I would say like people would ask me all the time, like, what do you think about having sex before fights? And I was like, sex is not the problem. The problem is that you're in camp turning into this warrior. Now you gotta be a teddy bear. Right. And now oh. you gotta bring yourself back up to be, be a warrior is an emotional roller coaster. Right. So that's why when <clears throat> you talk to um, all these other boxers that make millions, they go to camp for two, three months, whatever, they just go away. They they stay away from everybody else. So that way they don't have to mix those things. Yeah. You know, but obviously you gotta have the money to do those things. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just do it at the when you starting, it's hard to do things like that unless you got good money, yeah, and good, great sponsors, sponsors yeah. you know, then you can pay to do camp somewhere else. But a lot of people that I know, like they don't have to um, do their camps in remote areas. What they do, they just go to a different town when where they don't know people. People have they don't have access to them, so they're able to. They still go to the store, they still go to a restaurant, but they don't have to worry about other people like hey let's go do this let's go do that you know because when it's time to rest you gotta rest right you know when it's time to train you gotta train and you can't be going to training thinking that you gotta leave training to go have dinner right that's not how it works you know you gotta be focused on on what's going on at the gym mm -hmm. um so obviously that's i think it's a, a very big challenge for for all for most fighters um obviously there's going to be the few that evolve probably a little faster um, emotionally and they're able to neutralize those you know those emotions yeah. and, and be able to like say in camp and, and things like that um, so <clears throat> with, with that like what do you learn from this last time through through your camp I know you were going through an, an emotional thing and um, but you know what but you were at the gym and you were pushing yourself Mm -hmm. And what 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 do you think is the biggest lesson out of that? Um, you know, the biggest takeaway for me is was definitely the fact that you know having in my past relationship was like she was backbone everything to me, and I didn't have that. And uh, my my biggest support system. So going through camp, it was. It was very tough. So I, I think the the key point for me is that I, I can't rely I can't rely on somebody else, my significant other, to keep me mentally focused for the job that I have to prepare for. So yeah, I would say that that the biggest takeaway is that it's 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 all it's all on me. Like so the next relationship I do have, anybody that I <laughs> you know, do start the date, um, whatever is that I know now that it's, it's going to be separate. Like I can't, I can't rely on them. I can't mix the two because it's only me in there. It's only me training. It's only me fighting. And it's only me that has to deal with the emotions of wins or loss. Yes. Yes. Um, When, when you're going through this, like, like I, I want to call it a, an emotional struggle um, in your personal life, and it affects your professional life as a fighter. You know, like I mentioned before, the big difference is always going to be that you have another person in front of you that's being ready to come into the ring, come into the cage, and kick your butt. Right. Yeah. Um, and like any other things, like a team sport or stuff like that, it can be wrestling. But anything that has to do with combat, like and is a one on one thing, the 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 risks are always going to be higher, mm -hmm. right? Than than some other sports. Yeah. I, I mean, I play soccer and throughout college, I played basketball throughout high school, and there's you you you're gonna get injured. You know, I, I, it's happened to me. But uh, but it's very different when you got someone that's trying to like really like punch through your face right you know kill or be killed it, it, like. exactly yeah and uh <clears throat> so 
for your next camps, right? Um, as you approach it, now that you understand that you got to rely on yourself and you got to be a little more emotionally mature, more emotionally stable, um, as far as not allowing those things to interfere. Um, how do you, do you think that like going away is good? Or do you think that staying within your environment still and, and pushing through, it, it's good? Which one do you think is, is better? I think, I think what, <clears throat> what would be better would be going away. Mm-hmm. Going away, having your, your team with you, the people that are around you the entire camp. And all you're doing is focus is training. Focus, train, eat, sleep, do it again. Repeat. I think that would be best. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, I like financially, that, that can't happen for the next camp. So I think with the lessons that I've learned through the last camp, uh, when, whenever I get a fight booked, it, it will be a lot different. I still have my circle of people around me through the camp, but um, the the lesson has been learned, and and I won't make that mistake again. I and I'm gonna share my my opinion about that. Um, <laughs> I think the people that go away are weak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because because they don't know how to how to emotionally control things. Uh-huh. Um, because I can tell you from my experience throughout my life, like there's not one person um, that can tell me not to go to the gym. Like there's not one person that can tell me let's go do this instead of you going to the gym. There's not one person that can control those things. You know, yeah, um, I, feel I feel like no matter where you at, and, and I'm gonna tell you this, when um, maybe when I was like 20, 21, 19, 19, um, I, I was exposed to many things. There were people with a table, like doing drugs, right? People drinking. I've never done drugs in my life. I don't even drink. Like I'm a social drinker, if anything, here and there, you know, I'll come out like, okay, have a drink. Yeah. Um, but I, I had to have a, I had to, I needed to have a, a strong will to be able to do that, right? So, and, and I just kind of taught myself because I went through a lot of things in life and and I was out there at times like I didn't have nothing to eat. Um, so, but I didn't have time to look at myself as a victim or, or like worry about other things, right? It was just me continue moving forward. Yeah. Um, I didn't even care like, where the next meal was going to come from, like I knew it was going to, I was going to find it. Right. Um, so in, in those circumstances taught me a lot, you know, it, it forced me to grow, to mature emotionally. Um, I love people, right? I love humans, but it doesn't mean that I, I'm not going to dislike you because you're dirty or, you know, you just don't have good, um, uh, um, a good set of values or principles, but uh, <clears throat> but I'm but I've been able to unplug, right? So if if I if I have a good friend and the friend tells me like, oh, I don't want to talk to you, I easily unplug. I'm like, that's cool, and you will never hear me talk about the person ever again, and not because I dislike the person or I hate the person, not at all. I just won't bring light to the person, yeah. you know? And <clears throat> so I learned, and that's what I tried to convey to all the fighters. And trust me, it's not easy. It's an uphill battle, right? Um, obviously, I'm older, and, and, and I had to. Uh, I went through many things that helped me develop that. Um, I'm extremely emotional. I can watch a movie with my wife, <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm tearing up, yeah, you know? Yeah, me too, um, man. I'm, I can't yeah, I'm emotional. I'm, I'm extremely emotional. Like, <laughs> and that's why I care so much for people, and I, yeah. and, and I try to do for, for for other people. But at the same time, like, I've learned that I had to learn how to unplug from things. I couldn't allow this thing to interfere with this thing right here or with this, you know? I had to recognize, like, this is my path. And there's going to be negativity or negative energy that's going to come in this direction. But I need to learn how to handle it. Um, a good friend of mine years ago told me that he goes, in business, 
you you got to learn you you even have to learn how to deal with the devil right just don't sleep with the devil yeah you see i've heard that that's a big unplug right there yeah so hey devil okay you want to do business but it doesn't mean that we're going to be best friends right we, you see i'm separating things yeah um and and i think that's that's the the most important thing to like be able to develop that but you got to feed it yeah. you have to feed it uh, like get everything else in life when you jump on a um, opportunity you can't be thinking about anything else if because think about this when you're fighting you throw a jab what's a good counter for the jab another jab you throw a one two what's a good counter for a one two left foot you see you kick is there a counter if you go for a takedown, is there a counter? Absolutely. But if you start thinking like that, why fight? Right? You see, there's a risk. Every time you throw the jab, every every time you throw the combo, there's always going to be a risk. Mm -hmm. But if we think like that, we're not going to do anything. Yeah. Because we're like, oh, no. Should it? And that's why a lot of people, like, if you think about it, they start overthinking when they're fighting, especially when they're first starting. Um, and even pros, sometimes they... Freeze up. Yeah. Right? Um, how come he's not throwing the right? How come he's not? Because they're overthinking. they overthinking. And, and they're overthinking because, like, if I do this, he might do this. If I do that, he and it's happening. Right. Yeah. It happened to me in my second fight. And, 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 you, and you're not as quick because you're overthinking everything. So you got so many signals going to the, in so many different directions yeah. that you don't execute properly. Um, and, and, and that's, that's what's was interesting you know uh your parents um do they live here in tampa too or my parents uh my, my mom's actually in uh louisiana she lives with my brother uh my, my dad passed about eight nine nine years ago oh it's been a yeah, while okay yeah. is, is she very supportive of like your your fighting thing or she is um but she obviously doesn't like to watch the fights but got um, you she just she, wants the results yeah the results call me later let me yeah, know how it exactly went. exactly <laughs> what about your siblings are they are they're like supportive yeah, they're, they're huge fight fans they watch all really? the fights yeah oh my god that must be so, so exciting dude like because um i mean it, it, i don't come from a like a, a big like a big number of siblings so like you know but i see other people Sometimes, like when the siblings rally behind them, yeah. you know, it just it's I saw a different energy, man. Yeah, and especially when they were so supportive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a brother in uh, Louisiana. He's a doctor. Um, I think he's in uh, Shreveport. Uh, Shreveport. Yeah, they're yeah. they're close. Like uh, Shreveport's not too far away from where my brother and my, my mom are staying. They live in uh, Nacogdoches. Gosh, got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've never been there, but uh, I'm pretty sure. Some point I gotta make it out there to, to see my brother. Shreveport's cool cool town or cool city. Yeah. Natchitoches sucks. <laughs> terrible. Really? That's a terrible town. <laughs> like I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Really? <laughs> that, that bad? Yeah. Like my like my my sister was living there because my niece, her daughter, was going to school in, in uh Natchitoches at junior college there. But like when they all were all living there, my brother and my mom ended up staying after my sister moved away, and then and then my niece they graduated college and then now they live in Dallas. Her and her husband have a just bought a house in Dallas, so that everybody's like relocating to Dallas now. Wow! My mom and my brother are gonna head over to Dallas here pretty soon, but uh, yeah, Natchitoches is a terrible town. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> like it's just terrible. Hey, we love you guys. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Negative, hey, I love you, but not for me. Oh man, so um, so what what do you have planned right now? Like any any like um, any, any time frame as far as like when you want to fight next? Yeah, um, you know, I want I wanted to fight, you know, shortly after the new year, but um, my manager he they said March. They were looking March. Then he said we're looking April, and then I don't know yet. <laughs> so, you know, like I was telling. Uh, I was telling you earlier that I think they're, they, they had, they have a plan. I think they wanted to see where, you know, the winner of Jared Grant and, um, John Dodson, who the winner of that was going to be, obviously John Dodson won, um, that bumped him up to number three. And then, um, I'm ranked number two right now. And then the guy that's ahead of me, Tyler Randall is about to fight the guy that I just beat in November last year. And, um, if, if Chancey Wilson beats, beats Tyler Randall, 
Chansey Wilson would be number three. That bumps me. That bumps John Dawson to two, and then uh, me to number one. So uh, David Feldman um, said there will be a flyweight belt this year. Yeah. I just... So I think if if that if if it's going to play out the way it does, um, that that I'll title fight summertime. Hopefully, that's that's what I'm I'm hoping. Um, Nate shook the the matchmaker just said be patient so yeah. so we'll see how how do you, you you're like you're from your usual day how does how, how much does it change to when you start getting ready for a fight um you know i i pretty much live in the gym you know that uh you know i'm 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 blessed to have a, a gym to where i can train mm -hmm. clients on a day-to-day -day basis and um also coach out of that gym so i'm there daily so it doesn't change much but they i normally block out hours of training and then i also train at you know other boxing gyms with other yeah. boxers too so i mean you go to st pete boxing yeah um which is a pretty is a pretty interesting place because um i've been there many many times and people don't know what it looks like like they can see it on tv and they see the they ring and they see people moving, but they're not saying like, as soon as you open the door, you literally have to close it to get around it, to get it, you know, walk around the, the ring and then go to the other small section where they have like two, three bags. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's I, I wish more fighters were, a, were able to visit that place and understand that because you have a bigger gym, it doesn't mean that it's better. Yeah. You know, you have so many champions that came out of that gym yeah. and it's not like they have all these resources, right? Right. But there's a lot of knowledge, a lot of content yes. within the gym. So the talk is different. Yes. It's very, you under, you start understanding this more mental than anything else. Right. Because you go to all these other gyms and they have everything, right? Speed bags, this, that, blah, blah. Then you go to this small gym and you got people like Keith, Thurman, Jeff Lacey, and all these people that have came out of that gym. Mm -hmm. A small little gym. A small, tiny little gym. Like, and you, you barely got space around the, the ring. Yep. <clears throat> and I love, you know, just like you said, I love that gym just because there's history. Whenever, yeah. you, whenever you walk in there, you got to like mosey your way around. Yeah. Because, you know, it's small. But if you, if you take the time to look, look at the things on the wall, it's history. Like there's pictures of Winky Wright. Like mm -hmm. it, it's just so there's it's it's history and it tells a story. Like you got Keith Thurman up there. Like, he's a teenager in some of these pictures. Mm -hmm. Old fight posters. It's just and then articles. Like it, it's 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 insane. Like it's it's a different type of feel and a different type of experience. Yeah. Be and, and then again we go back to it's not about. Um, how big it is, how pretty it is, because when you look at it from outside, right next to like a little, what we call bodegas, right? Like a little shopping yeah. thing, whatever. Yeah. And, and it's like pretty much in the hood. It and, is. Yep. And it's like, when you look at it from the outside, it's like this like little house out there in the corner. Mm -hmm. And then you open up the door and you're like, oh, hold on, you know, like, and, and there's so much. That have uh, that have uh, come out of the the gym, and and then it comes down to this that the huge message of like listen, is about the mental aspect of the sport. You know, you can you can think that the if you thinking that the speed back is gonna get you there, it's not. You know, it's. You walked in there, you walk in there, you get a whole bunch of predators, right? Everyone is like, they're trying to destroy. Yeah. They're trying to like, they, they're just turning into killers, right? There's no room for like complaints or playing victim. Right. Or it's hot. Yeah, it, it's hot. Yeah. None of that. Like, you know, that doesn't even exist there. Yeah. And that's the type of stuff that I like. Um, I remember being up north and being in this building, all broken windows and everything. And during the winter when it was like snowing, uh, people still training. And they have this little like 
heating towers or whatever. Like small ones, like in a couple places, it was still cold out there, right. you know. And people trained. No one, no one complained. No one, no one was complaining. Like everything was like, let's get the the, the work in, you know. Right. Like, like I like, hey man, we're, we're tough here, you know. We're rough, you know. And like you can punch me all you want, but I'm gonna punch you back, right? You know. Um, so it was, it was, I don't know, man, when I was younger and I was coming up in martial arts, we didn't have, we didn't wear cups, like mouthpieces. We didn't wear none of the stuff. It was just like, it was just like straight, like, 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 let's go take your shoes off. Let's go. You right. know, that's, that's how it was. That's and funny. then eventually in karate, they came out with this little, um, knuckle pads. Yeah. <laughs> they say in case that you, you slip, well, everybody was slipping, yeah. you know, everybody, cause now they had the knuckle pad on and they're like, you know what? Now I can actually hit you. Yeah. You know, and um, I mean, things have changed so much and they developed so much. Um, but I think it's also taken away from that roughness, from yeah. the, the toughness, you know, um, I, I mean, uh, there's people are doing amazing things when it comes down to technique and, and combinations and, and things like that. You know, I appreciate that is that the sport has obviously, evo- has obviously, obviously evolved, yeah. but at the same time, there's a, a um, little bit of softness, you know, and, and that's the hardest thing, you know, because you tr- here are trying to be a warrior and you're a, a good group of people and only taste or one of those, those the, someone in the group to start acting like a victim or yeah. acting uh, or complaining. And it's so contagious. And next thing you know, all five of you are doing it. Right. And you don't even realize it yeah. either. Yeah, yeah. That, that, exactly. That's what happens. You don't realize this stuff. Yeah. And um, like when I come out to on Saturdays, when the, the guys and I come out on Saturdays to MJM, I, I like it out there. There's a lot of a lot of kids with a lot of potential, and and I know there's like a small group that are trying to do something with the sport. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you got members. You know, yeah. that's just how it works. Yep. That's how it works. And and I think that's the hardest thing, man, to like like really create that good group of people where everyone is on the same page, on the same yeah. frequency. Yeah. Um, your friends, like outside of the gym, because we all have different circles, right? Um, and that's, that's the other factor where we always got to be careful with. Because in the gym, everyone might be a killer, but you come out and you're hanging out with a different type of friends. And those friends are like, they don't understand what that takes. Right. And they're like, let's go hang out. Let's go do this. Let's go to the beach. Let's go do that. And if you're not paying attention, then you start doing that. Right. And forgetting about what the, the discipline you have to have in the gym. And that's, and that's, you know, that's, you know, sometimes with me, like if I, if I'm not, that's, if I'm not getting ready for a fight, like you, you'll catch me at the beach hanging out with friends or doing this, doing that. And, you know, enjoying myself. But, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, like I tell, I tell the guys all the time, for example, I'm like, look, we only, we only going to live for, for, so long not too long ago you just went through a car accident yeah. that could have taken your life yeah okay you you're here because something or someone was protecting you okay because the way things happen um you 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 probably wouldn't be here right now mm-hmm. right um so we only gonna live for so long and this is why i tell people like give 100 percent to everything that you do because you don't know when your time is going to expire. Right. I mean, that's it just reality. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are one foot in, one foot out. Right. So I think it's important to enjoy the pizza. I think it's important to, to eat the cheeseburger. Right. Yeah. I think it's important to have the little drink. You know, what's not, what, what's not good, it's having pizza every day. Right. Having a burger every day. Yeah. Having alcohol every day, yeah, you know, and ice cream every day, <laughs> and the sweets and all that stuff. Because if you don't, if you're not careful, and, and at least you're you teaching classes and you kind of like stay in the gym. But if you don't stay in the gym and you're away from that that routine, uh, the physical routine, and you're just eating and eating and eating, next thing you know, now you're like fifty pounds over. Yeah. Now, now if a fight pops up, you're not really ready. Because now you're working on losing the weight and you're not working on staying on, 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 on the fighting aspect. Yeah. 
All you're doing is you're coming to the gym to lose weight. Right. You'll go through the process, but your mind is not on the fight. fight. It's on the weight. On the weight. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so I think the most important thing is to like maintain a certain weight where when things come up, because a lot of opportunities come up at the last second. Yeah. And they'll get, they'll call you like two weeks out and it might be a big opportunity. Mm-hmm. And if you too far from that from the mark, now it's not gonna be good. Cause yeah. not all you're thinking about is like how to lose the weight. You come to a gym, you, you you force yourself to be at the gym because you're trying to sweat. Yeah. You're not even forcing yourself to come to the gym to to train for the fight. Right. You know? You 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 start lying to yourself. You right. tell you say that, that you're there for the fight, but you're not, you're there to lose weight. Yep. You know, because it's it's not really is is it's hard to concentrate on fighting when you're trying to lose weight because you know weight is the hardest challenge yes, when it comes it down to that's to the fight. fight that's the fight for me you know like there's been many times where i've let myself go in between fights and now now i i don't let myself go quite as much anymore i, I get about the heaviest i have 45 46 47 around there and then then whenever i have my fun and then like i start Watching myself stick yeah. around 38, 39. I'm like, I'm 38, 39 right now. Yeah. So, so you try to maintain a certain weight. Yeah. Not too far from the mark. Right. Because otherwise you put yourself in, in a bad situation. Right? Yeah, man. And, and it's, you feel it, terrible. Like it's and, just terrible. Yeah. And, and, and losing weight and cutting weight, it affects many, all the things to you, man. It affects your brain. It affects your, your body, you right. know, things like that. Um, and, and that's why, you know, I think it's important to, to be disciplined with in, in life um, because if you're not, then you're going to gain too much weight. Right. Um, if you're not, you're going to be doing other things that you shouldn't be doing because it's going to affect you, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're not going to be – then you come back and you're like, I, I, I want to spar. Then you spar, like within 30 seconds, you're already gas, gas. Or you roll an ankle because, you're, because you're, <laughs> yeah. your legs aren't moving right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it it happens like that, man, and and that's why uh, I try to tell fighters or athletes you got to be selfish with with your time and and how you do things. Um, because if you're not, what's what's going to end up happening? People, are, and especially if you have a good attitude, a positive attitude, people want to pull you in different directions because they want to have you around. You know, you bring that good energy. And and it happens, and and it's not, and it's okay to to be that person, but at the same time, if you're not able to unplug when it's time to unplug, then you need to stay away from, from right. those things. Yep. But if you're able to unplug from that, like then you're good. Right. You know, okay, I'm I'm having my fun. I'm still maintaining, but now it's time for me to unplug. Bye, guys. See you in a couple right. months. Exactly. You know, now here here I go. I've got some friends that are that are like that. They they joke with me now. They're mm-hmm. you know they're like. Why are you hang out with all your gym friends? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm working. I'm preparing for a fight. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, yeah. I see, I'm Be, like, because because you know it is like even relatives they don't understand what it takes. You know, unless they're being like extremely competitive or like they doing things that are like require the type of like discipline and focus, um, they don't understand it. Yeah. You know, they think that that you just you go to the gym and that's all you need, but they don't understand like there's such a process yeah um before and after the gym you know you got to be careful what you eat what you're doing it, you got to rest properly you know you, and and it's tough because a lot of people a lot of fighters work yeah. so i think it's so important that you schedule things because like you were talking about you create this time blocks for during for you during your training camp and 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 that's what you got to do for everything even for your personal life you get enough from this time to this time. There's no, I'm going to be doing this. Yep. From this time to this time, I'm at the gym. From this time to this time, I'm taking a nap. From this, you know, and you got to turn your phone off and like tell people don't don't bother me. Right. You know, and and that's the hardest thing, man. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny because you know I've been living this life where I'm like, hey, like I've had you know a friend. She's like, hey, you know, let's hang out. I'm like, well, I have this block out of the day that we can hang out. Yeah. For an hour, and then. Obviously, like they have lives too, you know. She's got life, but it's just like this day I can. I've got this hour to hang out, and that's it. Yeah. And then I'm back at the gym. Like it's it's tough, but after a while, good's routine. Yeah. And then it's our life, and then you know the people that that are that truly care, they understand. Yeah. 
that's a key. Yep. That's a key. Like the people that do care, they truly care. They understand. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. But some other people don't understand, and they want to give you a hard time about everything. Right. Right. You know. Um. So what what else are you thinking about? Like after you're done with fighting, what do you have any any goals? Anything that you you want to do after fighting? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that that I you know goals that I want to accomplish. Um. You know, I've already kind of set myself up already because I don't plan on fighting for no more than a couple years, two or three yeah. years. Get the belt, defend it a couple times, and then, and then you know, hang it up. Um, I was telling Brandon earlier that um, that I had the opportunity. I had a, had an opportunity that was presented to me, and it was too good to turn down. Um, you know, I, basically, um, I'm the new GM for Mayweather Fitness, um, nice. St. Pete. Um, you know, a great opportunity. I get to stay in the fight and fitness world. Um, I get a lot of perks, uh, salary, I, I benefits, um, company car, you know, so a lot of, a lot of good things, definitely blessed with the opportunity. So, um, and then eventually I, you know, I'll have part ownership in the business. Uh, so, you know, I'm setting myself up as much as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, it, in also too, you know, there was other things that I was doing um, before I, f I focused solely on fighting. Again, uh, you know, I was in the film industry for a while, done, done a lot of commercial work. Um, I've done, I've been in a few movies, nothing big, no, you know, nothing crazy big, but a lot of commercials. I've done a lot of work for Disney for like, like their 50th anniversary campaign that they're still running. I, like somebody sent me a picture of me and my, one of my ex my ex girlfriend at the time, like they used us a lot because we were, we were like the biracial couple, yeah. you know. <laughs> so they yeah, they yeah, sent yeah. her a picture. There was a picture of us on the Amway Center in Orlando, like you know, visit Disney or like Disney 50th anniversary, and it's it's her and I, and I'm wearing these stupid Mickey ears, and like I'm holding her hand, and we're you know we're, we're walking, but uh, yeah, like, I would like to get back and back into doing things like that, doing auditions again, even though the auditions was like strenuous and hard, especially if you're on a time crunch, it's, it was just like fighting. It's like you had to prepare for it. Then you had to go on camera, talk, yeah. do your thing, and then send it to your agent. And then the agent sends it to, to the uh, producer. But yeah, that's something that I'd like to get back into eventually. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I was actually Ray Mysterio's stunt double for a Fox and direct TV commercial. Two years ago. No way. Yeah, man. Really? It was crazy, yeah. Dude, that was, that was awesome. Like, yeah. I, I tell my kids to, like, whenever they have an opportunity, just to jump on those things, man. Yeah. Um, I had so many um, so many opportunities presented to me when I was younger, but because I wanted to act kind of shy and this and that, I never jumped on, it, on, on them, right? And, um, and my whole thing is, like, I tried to tell them, I'm like, I wish I would have done it because I would have been in videos and all different types of things. Um, but be, and now I would be able to like show you and be like, look, this is what I was doing. You know, like, like, Hey, I just went for it, whatever. Yeah. And the other thing is like, you never know where, where it does going to lead to, right? You know, sometimes it leads to bigger opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. So bro, like, I mean, keep doing that. Yeah. Like, and I've, and just like you said, it's like, maybe like you should have just been like, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And that, that's like, I had the opportunity and I was like, I'm doing it. That's and just, I was and I went full steam in. I yeah. you know went to acting school, uh, got an agent. Like I, I'm, I was represented by one of the biggest agents that represents talent from Florida, yeah. Atlanta, and and L. A. And you know I can still get get back with her when I'm ready. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man. Like I, I I jumped on it, ran, did it. I lived it. Um. Was in a bunch of commercials. Um. I was in the movie. Uh. One of the producers from the Blair Witch Project yeah. produced this 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 movie, you know, and uh, I also got to make you know some some short films that I produced myself. Nice. So it was, um, you know, it was something that I really enjoyed, and I'm I'd like to get back into it. Dude, that that's yeah. freaking awesome, dude. Yeah. That that's truly truly awesome. Like that you're able to experience all those different things, you know, different different feels, different genres, different you know, different a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, dude. Even and, and I'm gonna share this with you, and I've shared this with other people, obviously. But uh, um, like even doing this podcast, like it took a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking because 
I've never been the type of person that I wanted to be under the spotlight, right? Um, I always want to do things behind um, behind the curtains. I want to be this the support guy, you know, encourage encourage people to do things. But um, I think the purpose of the podcast, as far as like contributing to to the community, hopefully your life experience, you overcoming certain challenges and certain tools that that you use um, for you know to navigate through through life. Hopefully, um, it it helps other people, you know, and and that's the only reason why I'm doing it. But I never wanted to have a camera in front of me, you know, really? like and and it's and it's insane because I played sports all my life and I've seen um, being around like in arenas and this and that and and there's always been people around as a, as a coach, um, you know. I'm I've been through I've been in the UFC and Bellator and all these big organizations and people everywhere screaming this that not not for me but i'm saying that just like you, all this noise and, and things like that and been really good at like unplugging from those things and just doing playing my role you know as a coach so those things don't bother me um but having a camera in front of me like dude i like <laughs> I, I i don't i don't i don't I, I was never comfortable now i'm getting comfortable because yeah. i'm doing this more often but uh it took it took a little bit, you know. I spoke to Brandon and I was telling him like, Brandon, look, this is what I'm thinking, blah blah. But it took it took a few. It wasn't like like oh, I'm telling you now and like let's do it next week, you know. It wasn't like that. Yeah. It took a little bit of thinking and uh, soul searching and I processing. Guess, and, and like process, it's yeah. literally processing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially and, if and, you're not used to like yeah. the camera. It's... Yeah, because I I just don't don't want that attention. Like yeah. I never care for it. You know, I, I want to do a lot of things in life. And and if I can sign a check, and no one sees my face, like that that's that's me, you know. Like I don't I don't care for those things. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's important. But if you if you have that 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 attitude, if you're an extra, extrovert and things like that, go for it. Because then your way of changing the world is different from mine, you know. So it's not like mine is right and yours is wrong. Right, it's just like we just got different approaches to right. it, you know. And but I'm, I'm learning now. I'm learning to pull myself out there a little more and 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 wave and to in order for me to make other things happen. Right, you know. Well, I'm I'm glad. You know, I think it's you know I think it's a a great thing that you're doing this mm -hmm. now. You know, because like you're a great coach. I love what you and the boys are doing. All the things that you guys are doing outside in the community. I think that's it's definitely definitely admirable you know i, I love it I like, appreciate that man and you know I'm, I'm blessed to be around you guys as well so i think you doing this podcast is not only helping other people sh sharing other people's stories mm -hmm. i think it's i think it's a great thing and, you, and you're built for it like you're a great coach <laughs> you're a great coach and you know the guys follow the leader and you're a great leader so oh man i really appreciate your words man like um but the i think like everyone that i come across like all these, all these guys that entrust their training to me and all the people outside of the gym and in other gyms like yourself and other people, um, I think to me that's a blessing because um, I pay a lot of attention and I learn from you guys. And that's why to me it was important to, for this project, it was about like let's bring people from, from our area, not, not just from here, from other states as well and, and all, from, from other countries as well, you know, and for them to share their experiences because I think it's, it's important for other people to understand that you, you're not alone. You know, yeah. we, we, there's other people going through the same things so or similar things right. that you're going through. Yep. And I wish when I was younger, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have Google, we didn't have cell phones, none of that, you know? So it was, um, if you didn't have that direct person in your life to kind of like mentor you or guide you, like, you only went so far, right? You know, um, nowadays, like if you want to learn something, you can literally go on YouTube, type it yeah. in, and, and you, you have like ten people yeah. telling you like how to do it. You know right. how to, and, and like as far as like even even about like you as a person, you know how can I, how can I um, fix my attitude? And you type it in, and you got like ten different people right. telling you how to fix it. Ten different gurus, yeah, whoever <clears throat> for everything, even even in the sport. And obviously, I'm not. I don't want to tell people, 
and you shouldn't do it. Um, d- don't don't believe everything. You know, like you got to be able to discern the information because I see a lot of coaches getting on on on, on YouTube or social media, and to be honest with you, a lot of times they create more bad habits of good habits. You know, mm-hmm. and we got to be careful because I'm pretty sure you you see some people come across on social media and you see them doing certain things and you're like, wow, you know, that person can get is going to get hurt doing that. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, but I, I want people to be happy and do whatever they're doing. I, well, all I'm saying is like, yeah, watch those videos, listen to what people are saying, but th- don't just watch one video. Right. Watch different videos. Right. You know, and there's going to be some, some things are going to be um, uh, they're going to have more in common, right? And then the other things, write a little question mark, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and then go ask another person, you yeah. know? But don't just take it for, like, you watch a video and next thing you know, you're like, oh, yeah, like, this is how you do it. Next thing you know, you're getting hurt, Yeah, you know? And that's what I tell a lot of times. I've told fighters throughout the years, like, oh, are you watching YouTube? Like, what are you, HBO boxing? Like, what are you yeah. doing? Because they'll see certain things and want to do right. it in the gym. But I'm like, you don't understand what they're doing. Right. You know, and yeah. now that's why you just got kicked. That's why you got taken down. You yeah. know, that's why you just got punched, you know, because you're not listening to the right people. Right. You know, right. And, and I think that's, and, and that's for everything, you know. But, but then again, you know, in business, business is business. But when you're talking about fighting, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. You need you that's the difference. You're gonna end up in the hospital. Mm-hmm. You know, we've broken something. Yeah. So right. and um, you know, and that and that's why I think like, you know, it's important to 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 have mentors, right? To have people that can guide you mm-hmm. and and help you out. But it's not, at the same time, you as a fighter, you also have a responsibility first towards you, right? Then also also towards your community yes. because there's other people watching you and and it's not that you even if you don't want it like there's still people watching you right so it's important that you inspire them and motivate them because even though I believe that that comes from within there's other people that still need a little bit of help yeah right we 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 don't all have that internal strength to bring it out right so we need sometimes we rely on other people to kind of remind us. You know, or to kind of like teach us, mm-hmm. and then we take it from there. Right. Because it's happened to me. You know, like like I have had like different stages in my life, and 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 because of that, and also all the people that I was lucky to come across that kind of gave me a little, a little um, gem. You know, like right. oh here, and I'm like oh wait, hold on, what? Yeah. But I I executed, mm-hmm. I applied it to my life. You know, yes. I didn't say let me put it on the shelf and I'll come back to it. No, I was like, you know what? Next day, I was a new man. Right. You know? I think I think one of the best, you know, one of the things, the most fulfilling thing for me, too, is just like, you know, giving back. Yes. You know what I mean? Whether it's it's giving a tip to a guy that's hitting a bag, seeing their face light up, or, or, or whether it's like a church, or mm-hmm. serving at church, or serving the community. Like, those things is what really, truly feels, fills me. Yes. You know, giving back. Like, I've been blessed with a gift that I didn't ask for. I used my gift, do what I do at the best of my ability, and then I'd like to to spread it and serve, and serve, give back. Dude, you, you have a, the, a huge gift. Let's start from the time you were born to yeah. where you ended up. To where you at now? That's such a like a that's a story to tell for other people that probably kind of like walk in similar shoes. Yeah, you know, and not everyone is lucky. You lucked out with like some good parents, right? Um, I can tell you that I'm very very fortunate, and there's not a day that goes by that I'm not I'm not thankful for the opportunities that were given to me, like. You know, you know, God placed me yeah. in in their in their hands. And growing up I've had so many opportunities that were opportunities that weren't given to me that I saw and then I just took and I and I did things. 
I don't know why or how, but I did things. And I was, I was either bad at them or good at them. Or if there was anything that I wanted to, I just did them. So it, it's just, it's just, I've been all through my life, even in the car accident, like things happened and I've been given an, a second chance. And now I look at life through a different lens. I want to give back as much as possible. I want to be able to inspire and, and, and create a, a, a different, a different way of thinking you know, because there's a lot of hate going on in this world right now. Oh. There's a lot of mess that's going on in this world. And, you know, it just take it takes one person to be able to change, to sway a room. And yeah. I want to be that person to sway the room. Yeah. And, and that's what I tell people. Like, you don't have to change it, the, the world, but you can change those around you. Right. And those people around you will change all the people around them. Right. And that's just how it grows. Yeah. And that's that's important thing. And uh, now, dude, I, I mean, keep doing that because I think it's super important. Um, you know, you, you to be able to do that, whether it's like through, um, through the sport, right outside of the community, uh, like, you know, just keep giving because to be honest with you, man, you give and at some point something is coming back your way. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it, it only opens up doors and opportunities and, and just good vibes, yeah. good vibes and good people. You know, when you're putting good positive energy out there good positive energy comes back to you as well. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's what's so important, man. That's why I'm like so selfish with time and my my who I share my space with. Um I don't I don't I don't want negativity. I, I don't want drama. I don't want none of that. You know, I got my own little problems, but you don't see me like talking about it. Right. Or drowning in a glass of yeah. water. You know, like I'm just I just deal with them. And, but I, I got to deal with them in a, from a positive perspective. Because if I don't, I, I'm, I'm going to get sick. Right. You know? And, and, and physically yeah, sick. Yeah, physically sick yeah. and mentally sick. Yeah. And, and I don't want that. Like, I, I need to, whatever challenge might present itself, like, I'm, I'm, I want to, like, attack it with, as, with a positive mindset, with a positive attitude, you know? And, and, and I don't want to go around it. Like, I want to knock it down, right. you know? A lot of people try to go around it, but it's still there. I just I just, I, I just want to, like, if there's a big wall right in front of me, I want to knock the wall down. Right. That's, that's the, but that's the fighter in you, coach. That's, that's, <laughs> I think that's the way it is with the, all of us. Like, I, I'm, I'm like, I don't want to try to avoid the situation. Yeah. Like, let's deal with it. Let's yeah. talk about it. And let's 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 squash it. Yeah, man. You know, like I I don't like to try to avoid situations. Let's talk about it. So so how should, what, I'm gonna ask you a question here. Like, what should I do about like Brandon? Because Brandon, dude, every time I move with him, like <laughs> he's small, he's fast, and he just goes in and out, zigzagging. Next thing you know, like he over, it puts his head down, overhands me, overhands, and and boom, hits me in the face. And I'm like, what the hell? Then I gotta get smaller. <laughs> you know, that's he, he bullies me, man. He bullies me. But he bullies me too every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're about the same size. <laughs> no, man. I, I I love the sport. Um, the, what you share in the gym, it, it's you can't even describe it. I can't like if people ask me it, like to put it in words, I can never describe like. It's, it's, it's a feeling, man. You got to be in the gym and share things with people in order for you to understand, like, what I'm trying to say, you know? Yeah. Because it's a different connection, you know? It's a different level of respect. It's a different approach to things. It's a, it's a different form of vulnerability. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. I think I think as I think as in the sport that we do, like, an athlete, like, there's so many vulnerable times where we have to be vulnerable yes and be able to share experience mm -hmm. to help others yeah. so it's it's a different level of, of vulnerability yeah I believe. I, 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 absolutely because if i'm moving around with someone that's like that fights a um one 125 right and and i throw a good kick or I throw a hard kick you see like like i can't see it like that i get it i get it like stay I got to feel the, 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 that factor, you know, being vulnerable and, and understanding that, hey, here we're family. I'm trying to help you get better, yeah. you know, and, and we're family. So you also need to understand that 
because I'm bigger, you don't have to go all out. Right, you know? right. So it's kind of like we're gonna have a good exchange here with good energy. Right. You know, so so you and, and, and that's the crazy part because yeah, there are times like um, if I'm gonna go hard, I'm gonna go hard with people my my size, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but even then is intensity, it's not bad blood, right? right? It's intensity, it's just like ah, 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 ah. um it's not gonna be like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna break something right. you know like it's not about that right so that's why the connection is so different because with someone smaller is a lot more control mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you do jiu-jitsu uh striking wrestling whatever you do you know you got to have the control so that's why you got to you got to be tough rough but you also got to be vulnerable right see and 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 that's it's such a crazy mixture think about like if you're a religious type of person you know and you got these religious beliefs now you come into the gym and we telling you go kick this this guy's ass. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that conflict. Right. Yeah. So then you gotta start making adjustments and be like, well, that's a professional fighter. I'm a prof I'm a, I'm a trained professional fighter. That's a trained professional fighter. You know, so you can't look at it uh, as you being a bully yeah. or you taking advantage you know of that, the other person. Yeah. 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 You know, it's, it's it's so many different things, man. That a lot of people don't don't understand because they're not in the situation. Yeah. Um, you know, but there's a lot of a lot of times it can be create an internal conflict if you're not if you're not um, aware of it. Aware. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah. Aware. Yeah. If you're not aware of it, like it creates this internal conflict that you have to deal with, and then it it affects you. Yeah. You know, so you got to know how to. That's why like the emotional maturity is so important to like learn how to deal with everything in life. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, like I was reading this book and it was saying like sometimes life is just throwing things at you, but it's not because life hates you, it's because it's trying to wake you up. Wake you up and tell you, tell you something, learn, yeah. learn a lesson. And, and life is telling you like, hey man, you're meant for more, yeah. you know, like, come on, don't fall asleep. Like, you know, don't, 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 don't sit back. Like, you know, life is telling you, wake up, come on, pick it up, you can do it. You know, a hundred things, go do it. You know, don't worry about it. Like everything is gonna like work itself out. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that's why it's so important to like like I said, maintain the positive attitude, the positive thoughts. Is that gonna be twenty four seven? Hell no. There's times that you know you want to like grab some someone by the neck, right? The the key is that you don't let it linger. Right. You know, it's, you don't let, let it control let, you. Yeah, you you want it to be for like ten seconds and then boom, shake it off. Yeah, and then move on. Right, because things happen. Like sometimes we're doing things, someone cuts you off. You're driving, little things like that. Just you just can't can't let it linger because yeah. that that's that's not good. No, you know. So you got to learn how to deal with those things, and that's why it's so important to to like I was saying to grow emotionally, you know, and 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 be able to like learn how to deal with different things, different people, embrace people the way they are. That's why I got so many like like good friends because. I respect them the way they are. Yeah. Like I know how they are. If you're an open book, I'm not going to tell you my personal, like too much of my personal stuff because I know you're going to go and tell somebody else. Right. But I understand that from you. So right. I just, I just don't do that with you. Right. You know. And, but if I want you to tell someone else, then I'm going to come and tell you. So, <laughs> yeah. You know. So it's just like one of those things. So, you, but you got to embrace people the way they are. You can't get, you can, you, you, you don't need them to be like you because it'll be boring. You know, like, like it, we all different. Yeah. But you just got to be observant and pay attention to people and, and embrace them the way they are, mm -hmm. you know, if you, and, and then just work on the, on the other part, you know, on the friendship and the relationship and things like that. So it's just kind of like, let's go half and half. Right. Yeah. Let's be in the middle. <laughs> yeah, man. But that doesn't make, that does so awesome, dude, that you got this new, um, this new, um, um, job, you know, and, and this oh, yeah, opportunity and, and I'm pretty sure you're going to make the most out of it, you know, um. Hopefully one of these days we can come and visit and yeah. see you in action. Um, if you need someone to make a coffee and stuff like that, like tell me where to send my resume. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, but uh, uh, my, obviously I'm looking forward to you to continue succeeding and doing well during camp. And, and obviously um, looking forward to your next fight, you know, and, and not just to you fighting, but in your personal life and in and, and your professional life and your business life, you know, I want you to do super well. And, you know, remember, if you need anything, anything, call Brandon.
<laughs> you know, dude. Thank you for coming around. Is it you want to shout out any of your uh, uh, sponsors? Um, you want to give out your handle? You know your yeah. social media handle, yeah. so like people come check you out. Yep. Uh, follow me Instagram uh, at JR Ridge. Um, shout out my brand One by JR Ridge dot com. Um, couple sponsors: Beach Waves Grill, Excelacore Realty. Um, yeah, and JM Muay Thai. There you go. Yep. Um, and I want to give a quick shout out to one of our boys. Mike, yes. you know, with King Killers right King here. King Killers. You I've know. actually got Mike shorts on. Today. Oh, you got him on? Yeah. There you go. Yep. King go Killers. King Killers, man. Check him out. Uh, go on social media. You'll you'll look it up. King Killers. It'll come up, you know, uh, and go check out their, their gear. And they got some other uh, cool things in there. All right. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Coach, for having you. me. Yep. See you around, man. Yep. Subscribe and like our page. We'll put you in the game. The Beanbags Talk. Hey, dude.